Holy rhythm, 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 holy rhythm. This is the third video in a series of lessons to cover polyrhythms. Please look in the video description for links to the other videos in this series. In this video, we will look at a simple way of spacing out polyrhythms and how to count them. There are multiple ways to figure out how to play and understand and count a polyrhythm, but my goal is to show you how to do this in a simple and effective manner. Let's begin with a three against two polyrhythm. How do you evenly space three notes or beats on top of two different evenly spaced notes or beats? One way I've seen this done is to write down something like this. Two rows of numbers that go one, two, three. Then you can circle the first number for every group of two numbers. Each row represents one full beat. There are two beats shown in this example each beat is divided into three even parts. The circled numbers represent the parts of the beat where you play three evenly spaced notes. The one in both beats represent where you play two evenly spaced notes. To demonstrate how this sounds, I will count all of the numbers out loud, slap my leg on the downbeat for the two evenly spaced notes, and I will snap my finger for the three evenly spaced notes. One, two, Three, 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 one, two, three. This same method can be applied to any polyrhythm. The second number in the polyrhythm is how many rows of numbers you will write out. The first number in the polyrhythm is how many numbers you will write out in each row. The second number also tells you how many groups of numbers there need to be so you know which numbers to circle. A four against three polyrhythm will get three rows and each row will have one, two, three, four. You will circle the first number for each grouping of three numbers. One, two, three, four, 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 one, two, three, four. A five against four polyrhythm will get four rows, and each row will have one, two, three, four, five. You will circle the first number for each grouping of four numbers. One, two, three, four, five. 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 One, two, three. Four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Now, here's the problem I have with that method. Typically, you do not count out the parts of a measure or beats with just numbers. 
For example, a piece of music like this is typically counted out as 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a not 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 Counting out 1 E and a 2 E and a 3 E and a 4 E and a helps you keep track of what beat you are on. Counting 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 does not. How does this apply to understanding, playing, and counting polyrhythms? I'm glad I asked. <sighs> Let's take a look at the 3 against 2 polyrhythm again. The number 2 in the 3 against 2 polyrhythm is our main number. We are working with 2 beats. The number 3 in the 3 against 2 polyrhythm is our secondary number. The goal here is to space 3 notes over two notes. So what has to happen in order to use a more typical method of counting music is the beat must be divided into three parts. And what happens when you divide a beat into three even parts? Now we can view the beats like this. One and a, two and a. Just like before, the number two in our three against two polyrhythm tells us where in the beat we play the three evenly spaced notes. If you underline the first part of every two parts in the beat, you will know how to space the three notes over two beats while using a more common method of counting rhythm. One and a two and a 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 How about four against three? Four against three tells you we have three beats as our base. Each beat is divided into four parts. Counting 16th notes will get the job done here. 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a. Now, underline the first part of every three parts in the beat. This sounds like 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a, 1 E and a, 2 E and a, 3 E and a. What about the 5 against 4 polyrhythm? This one gets a little tricky. You need to divide each of the four beats into five equal parts. Dividing a beat into five parts is not a common thing to do. However, that does not mean it is impossible. My recommendation for counting out five equal parts per beat with four beats total is this. 1 E and a E, 2 E and a E, 3 E and a E, 4 E and a E. This allows us to keep track of what beat we are on, and I feel it's fairly simple to say. <laughs> That's not the easy way to say it. I said, I feel it's fairly simple to say. Just because you don't feel it's simple to say doesn't mean I don't. <laughs> <clears throat> so, um, just like the previous two examples, portions of this rhythm 
or parts of the beat need to be underlined so we can see where in the beat we are going to play. Remember, the second number in the polyrhythm ratio tells you how to group the parts of the beat. Because we are working with a five against four polyrhythm, we will underline the first part of every four parts. It will look like this. It will sound like this. One E and a E, two E and a E, three E and a E, four E and a E, one E and a E, two E and a E, three E and a E, four E and a E, one E and a E, two E and a E, three E and a E, four E and a E, one E and a E, two E and a E, three E and a E, four E and a E. Developing the ability to comfortably count these rhythms can take a while. Like anything else in music, taking small steps in learning something difficult can and will help you learn difficult things in the shortest amount of time possible. Let's use the three against two polyrhythm to demonstrate how you can practice these complex rhythms in small portions. The idea is to start with a small part of the rhythm get comfortable with that, and then add just a little bit more, get comfortable with the new parts, add a little, etc. Keep doing that until you have the full thing. Here's what the three against two polyrhythm count looks like. Instead of just throwing yourself at this rhythm and trying to count the entire thing, here is how I recommend breaking this rhythm down into smaller, easier parts to play. Instead of slapping my leg and snapping my finger, this time, I'll just play an open E5 chord for the three even parts and tap my foot for the two even parts. First, get used to playing the first three parts of the rhythm. One and a. Uh. One and a. Uh. One and a. Uh. One and a. Uh. Next, add in beat number two. Make sure you tap your foot on both beats one and two. One and a two. One and a two. One and a two. One and a two. After that, add in the next part of the rhythm, just the very next part where you will strum again. One and a two and. 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 Now, add in the next part and get used to playing, tapping your foot, and counting out loud to this point in the rhythm. One and a, uh, two and a. Uh. 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 For the next step, begin to repeat this pattern, but stop right after you play, tap your foot, and count out beat one. One and a two and a 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 one. From here, you can keep adding small parts just like you did before the repeat began, or you can go for the entire repeat. Here is the entire rhythm played twice. One and a uh, two and a uh, one and a uh, two and a. Uh. You can try playing the rhythm three times, four times, as many times as you want. To take things a step further, you can try playing this rhythm and only saying the parts of the beat you are playing on. One a uh, and one a uh, and one a uh, and one a uh, and. This method of learning and practicing polyrhythms in small parts can be applied to any polyrhythm, or any rhythm or piece of music. Now that we've covered how to figure out a polyrhythm's count, it's time to move on to music examples. And that's gonna happen in the next video. That's it, video's over, lesson is done. If you like what you saw, I'd appreciate you hitting the thumbs up. 
and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you have yet to do so. If you would like to contribute to helping lessons like this get made more often, please check out the Mile High Shred Patreon page. There is a link to the website in the video description. You can also help spread the name of Mile High Shred by commenting on the video and sharing the video. Anything you do does help and is greatly appreciated. And always, thank you very much for watching.